just what I want to open up and just really know like, what questions do you have about it? And if not, I can expatiate more about it. But um, the one thing is you have to get over your pride. I mean, I'm Martin. By the way, James Dolman, who was the other third blogger, court reporter, not with the mainstream press, in the hacking trial, through byline, and the advice of the byline, to be transparent, um, crowdfunded coverage of the Coulson trial. And while this complete misrepresentation of the case collapsing went viral to the BBC, Channel 4, they all got it wrong. Um, Coulson acquitted of lying, yeah, they acquitted of perjury, perjury is very specific, which is lying to remain to the case. Um, James Peace also went viral, so he had maybe 70 sponsors, thousands of people read it. And because of the way that byline works, you keep your copyright. The crowdfunding doesn't take away your copyright, and uh, he sold the piece on to the spectator who published his piece last week about what really happened to Coulson Trial. So uh, the byline model doesn't, you don't surrender IP, you don't surrender it. And it, the fact you've only got 70, 100, I had about 700 by the end of the hacking <coughs> who supported either the book or the, all my coverage, um, many more people read it than that. So, you know, the readership and the, and the funders are a different model. So, but, but it's no good me going on about how uh, it worked for me. How would it work for you? Have you got, anybody got any questions about it? Um. Just to come back to your crowdsourcing or crowdfunding aspect, in a way you were a bit lucky of the fact that you have some kind of visibility mm. to get that successful. For somebody who hasn't got that visibility, what's the best way to start if you look back? Obviously it was a very high media trial, a high profile media trial. I was in the middle of a storm. But Martin has been funded for the Wallace trial. Not many people know about it. Not many people knew about the Coulson trial. On uh, the byline site, Julie Bindell, who's a feminist writer, writes about gender and prostitution, fully funded within a week or so. She has a core audience of followers. And that's the interesting thing. Um, if, and we're talking about getting an opposing voice who's more liberal about prostitution, Bern Penning, who also has a, a, a core following. You only need, on a subject, it doesn't have to be you following a person, it could be following a subject, really about a thousand people to follow you, and, or if you, you know, and get half of them funding you, and it works. So, you know, there are a lot of little niche audiences. Uh, now, paper, all the newspaper is really gentle, isn't it? How many people are following the financial pages? Or the sports page. It's bundling together these niche audience. You buy a newspaper because you're interested in the sport, but you know you have to wade through the ads. What's happening with the internet? Everything's dis unbundled. When I was a kid, and used to read the Sunday Times magazine to get to the Don McCullen photographs of Vietnam. I'd have to go through a Gucci ad. That's all gone, and so advertising is much better done by, by Google. And but probably there wasn't, there's still a niche audience for Don McCullen pictures. And there's, 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 there's photojournalism on the byline site. And what it aims to do is amalgamate a lot of niche audiences. And stories obviously probably wouldn't be told elsewhere. So I think if you have a passion and a project, if somebody's got, I think, look at what Xara have done with CSA, you know. They've got this great profile of something which is completely murky, people didn't know about. Um, and if you get a brand, you don't have to have a name. You can have following as an individual or following on an issue. And then it's finding where that audience is. I mean, obviously the audience came to me because I was in the eye of the storm at the hacking trial. But I'm going to help Rowan, for example. She used to edit the erotic review. She's coming to Byline. Now, she had thousands of followers 10 years ago when she was editor of erotic review. They're somewhere. We'll drill down to Facebook. She, she's, she's a, I don't know if you know her. She writes The Telegraph in the Mail. And she was, it's a, not really, a relationship columnist. And she was once, oh, I hate Facebook. I remember about four years. I hate, I'm never going to do Facebook. It's awful, awful, awful. And then she went on Facebook. She writes every day and she has this huge following. Now, the Mail and the Telegraph have sort of cut commissions by half across the board. And yet she writes brilliantly. And there were she has 1,500 friends. Now, they're not 1,500 personal friends. 1,500 people who love what she writes about relationships. And sex. Now that's personal author driven. So we launched two months ago with a mix of very famous writers and a kind of uh, freelance writers who are not well known. 
So for example, we had Dr. Top, who's like one of the 50 world press freedom heroes, and he has won many awards, he has 20k followers uh, on Twitter. And another, another person is Jill Bindle, who is quite well known, Guardian columnist, has a lot of followers. And we also had a very obscure Iraqi photo agency, which has like 500 Twitter followers. And we actually thought this Iraqi photo agency is the uh, is is going to be funded the latest, and you know, and we'll, I, we thought it will take the most amount of time, longest amount of time to actually fund it. Actually, um, counterintuitively, the first person, first group to get funded was this Iraqi photo agency, who never heard about. It. The reason was people uh, they had a specific niche, which is you know, uh, photojournalism in Kurdistan. And people felt the need to actually fund it because they're so obscure. And they thought, oh, unless I fund it, I'm, I'll never read their journalism. Right? Uh, because Daily Mail or you know, the Telegraph, their model is we need to satisfy a million readers. But the beauty of the crowdfunding model is that I have to satisfy about just 500 people or 600 people. So the most obscure writer can actually get funded uh, ahead of, you know, people who has 20k, um, 20,000, you know, Twitter followers and so on and so forth. So, and I actually studied before setting up this website of uh, previous successfully crowdfunded projects on Kickstarter. So, actually the most, one of the most successful projects that was done was a journalism project for Japanese game developers. It's very obscure. And another project was a, uh, a magazine website for uh, Malaysian gay men. It was one of the most funded, uh, funded uh, projects. And they're well-funded projects. So actually, it's about finding your niche audience, your target audience. Uh, and because the traditional newspaper model at the moment, from BuzzFeed to Huffington Post, their model is, let's get a million clicks, 10 million clicks, and get advertising revenue. But the model of crowdfunding model is, uh, the model of crowdfunding is, let's find 100 or 200 geeks, or people who are so passionate about your subject, to pay one to 20 pounds. Then you can get you know two thousand pounds to ten thousand pounds. Then you will be funded. So it's not just about high visibility of Rebecca Brooks trial and so on and so forth. It's about you know finding that niche or target audience that'll care about your subject rather than you know how tiny the sub uh, subject matter is. So okay, so that Thanks. that's what I wanted to. Uh, what we're doing hopefully uniquely on Byline it tends to be uh, the, the, there's two models basically. The Patreon in America is called Patreon model, which is for artists. Where artists are funded monthly because you like this artist, you pay a thousand people, give them one dollar a month. So there's this model, a column model, and then there's a project model which is more like Kickstarter, which is, and I did it on the Indiegogo, which is I can't really start this investigative project into whatever deep cut, so it's going to take time and expense until I get a certain amount of money. But you tend to have a, a proposal, an example of your work. But we're trying to do this rather than all or nothing. Uh, you know, either you know, either it's every month or one off. If we don't make it, you get your money back. By the way, we get your money back. Is to put it in milestones and stages. Like, well, look, I'll do the first third of this investigation and reveal something to you. If you like that, come back and support me again. Uh, but any, if you look on the site, yeah, it tends to be uh, some example of your work and, and, and a kind of pitch and a video. I think that's just good. I was wondering about uh, one of the journalists was covering the trial and so eventually so so. The article to the spectator, you said. Yeah. But obviously, then the crowdfunders would pay the person, and then what happens to them? I mean, to do any of that? Okay, so, so um, I think it's back to this model, this freemium model, which is they're not paying, you're not, as I said before, they're funding you to cover this. So they want it out there. They don't own any. Somebody said to me, Are you going to pay your crowdfunders back for your book if you have money in the book? Well, actually, the book wasn't the tweets, it was all the stuff I couldn't report. You know, it's a completely new book and all the stuff behind the stage, which I couldn't report. But, you know, people aren't owning your IP. They go, I want that out there. They get special access. They get these perks uh, of awards. And if you sell it on, it's your, you know. And, and, and it's weird that nobody's come back and said, wait, James Dolman, you got 500. I don't know how much you got. You got 500. I doubt you got that. Uh, you got 500 quid from the spectator. We'll give it, we funded you. Give it back. Nobody, it's not that kind of market transaction. So, yeah. um, how does uh, byline.com make its money? Okay, very good question. Well, um, did you, yeah, so you'll answer. So what's the other question? Sorry, okay. I, 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 so I, actually, I don't want this discussion to be over Byline, but anyway. No, no, no but, but, um, but also, so, so the other part of the question. 
is that and and, and how um, if a journalist does want to do this and um, has doesn't know how to even yeah. start, do you give any support? To yeah, of course. Yeah. Come, can I get advice from you about how I would do of it? Course, or of course. I mean, the model is basically we want to cut all the costs of newspapers. We we don't have a you know newsroom. We don't have. We're not printing papers. We're not actually hiring journalists. We directly get the crowd to support them. So we don't, we we dramatically cut the cost of traditional newspapers. So we are uh, much more healthy as a business. And on top of that, we're just taking the cut of the uh, commission. So let's say he raises ten thousand yeah. pounds for corporate journalism uh, for his project. Then it will get fifteen percent of that. That's the same with most crowdfunding, all crowdfunding yeah. matters take percentage. It's slightly higher than Indiegogo and Kickstarter because they're also providing sure. backup support. And you know, like Indiegogo, then I have to publish the tweets elsewhere. Here, it's a, it's a one stop. Yeah. yeah. So you take fifteen percent. Yeah, but at the first six month of our launch, I mean, at, 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 yeah. yeah, after the launch, we're uh, waiving that commission. So for the next four and a half months, we're not actually taking any commission. Yeah. And, and what support do you offer? So, I mean, advice and rewards, advi advice on how to set up rewards, rewards for the crop on this, right. and advice on how to set up the account and so on and so forth. Yeah, how to actually go your head to your yeah. site and how to get support. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's, you know, as, a, as it goes on, as it picks up byline, obviously the fact you're on byline becomes it's a self-supporting. And I'm obviously helping tweet out, now I have a lot of Twitter followings, you know, a lot of the yeah. stuff that came, I think I might have helped a bit, Martin. Uh, but be, Indiegogo does that too, they tend to give you tools for telling you how to raise your profile, the, the, thing, the tricks to do, and there are certain tricks, engage with people a lot on Twitter retweet them, favourite them, say nice things about them, you know. Yep. There's a lot of schmoozing goes on. But it's you had to schmooze editors before and he's just schmoozing lots of people instead of one person. Um, <coughs> so you had a question? Yeah. I found it fascinating. Um, you know, you've been editor for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, any kind of statistical analysis of who is giving you the money, sort of age profile, gender profile, in terms of amount or See, what strikes me, it's a different world from my newspaper world, uh, is that it's focusing, every example that's been given has been a serious political social issue. It seems to be cutting out all the trivia, which I think it won't. It also, <laughs> it also cuts out the Murdochs and the Romneys, uh, it seems to me. So, I, 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 listening to you, I quite, find it quite positive. It's quite a good thing to do with it. But I would be interested if there's been any statistics of who is giving you the money in what sort of amount. You did refer to it, but yeah. a bit vaguely. I think it is positive. And it's great. You know, it's great to be able to go direct to the public Should and I? get serious funding for serious journalism. It's wonderful. It's a really good opportunity for us all, you know. Yeah. And I think it's likely to grow. As to analysis of who is funding it, I'm not aware of any being done. I'd be surprised if any, any has so far because it's just so new. Uh, I'm sure as we go along, um, you know, there may, there may well be some analysis. I mean, I think, you know, one risk, one potential problem with crowdfunding is that, you know, you'll only get the journalism that is paid for by the crowd. So, you know, if you're, if you're the editor-in-chief of ITN, you can decide to, you know, go to, go to somewhere and report something or send someone there. Uh, and this is a bit different, but, you know, um, I think that's the only floor I can see here. Uh, just, just on that, the other site I was involved in is Bellingcat, which is does some of the best reporting. Bellingcat came for it. It's a guy called used to run a site called Brown Moses. Elliot Higgins set up this site called Bellingcat, which is really has done amazing work. First, he first detected that it was Assad who did the cancer attack on Damascus by using open source media, YouTube's triangulating it. He's been involved very much in tracking, and a lot of uh, journalists throughout Eastern and Central Europe tracking Russian troops in Ukraine. That you know they shot down MH17 because it's on social media. You could you could follow the photographs. You could see the statement from the Russian separatist leader saying we just shot down a cargo plane, and 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 so on. The foreign affairs reporting. It's like metropolitan. It also I think could open up. You know you won't get an IDN journalist sent over there, but you get people from there reporting direct back to you because social media opens that world up. 
you know, the Syrian war is on social media, it's all over YouTube. You can do so much detective and forensic work, you can Skype to somebody on the ground. Um, so I'd say that's uh, you know, the serious subject. As for trivia, we've got the Daily Mail online. We have BuzzFeed. I mean, I'm sure that's a great market. We do have cartoons coming on board in, in um, Byline. But there is a craving, and at the moment, originally the platform was designed almost like Uber or Airbnb. You know, Airbnb is the biggest hotel chain with no hotel chains. It puts, people want to stay somewhere, somewhere else. Uber has no taxes. But actually, it's not quite as free market. It's not as libertarian as that. Because there's a value to news, and, and it's no coincidence. In this country, it'd be difficult, it's different in America. A core group of journalists who feel the media aren't reporting stuff, or reporting it badly, especially about their own activities in regards to bribing officers, police officers, public officials, or phone hacking, that a lot of those journalists are on that side because they don't feel they get heard in the mainstream. So it has a public value. Telling the stories which other people don't want you to hear. Sorry, I'm just yeah. um, What sort of percentage of crowdfunding projects actually get off the ground? I mean, are we just talking about a tiny percentage sort of people who've got a bit for, or are we talking, you know, what, just roughly? Well, it, because... I mean, if you're talking about 100 products, how many of those would actually get crowdfunded? I, I mean, the interesting thing would be seeing places like Indiegogo and uh, Kickstarter and Patreon. Do you know more about this thing? Because you know, obviously, Byline's new, most things get funded, yeah, it's curated yeah. at the yeah. moment, yeah. selected journals. Yeah. I guess 40%. Yeah. 40%? Yeah, 40%. That's, yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. How many commission? out of your pictures, <laughs> because you've got so many freelance journals in, how many do you think you get commissioned of the products you, the stories you pitch? What percentage would you say? <laughs> Not 40%. So it's fascinating. It's actually good down on some manual. I'll actually tell you how uh, this whole Patreon model started. So there's this American uh, crowdfunded artist uh, platform mm -hmm. called Patreon. It was started by a YouTube artist who was making as low as $60, uh, 60 per month. So, I mean, I can't live, I mean, he was like, I can't live with $60 per month. I mean, and, but he didn't want to go onto Kickstarter because Kickstarter is just one old thing. He wanted it. So he said, I don't want to kickstart, I want an income. So he started this website where he gets, uh, he gives YouTube videos, just as he used to before, uh, before, but he set up premium rewards. So if you give me $1 per month, you can get onto my like private feed where you can talk to me, $5 per month, I'll give you free, uh, I'll give you um, music story videos and so on and so forth. And he, he has a layer of rewards. And he's now making seven thousand dollars per month, and there's like th thousands of artists who are doing that. And actually, very interesting phenomenon. In the first year, the creator to uh, funder ratio was one to two, and it was actually artists funding each other and one another. So basically, by kind of their solidarity, they took the whole movement off, and now there are thousands of artists, and so the ratio is one to ten or one to eleven at the moment. So then now there's a movement going on, but. As you say, actually, what I realized from buying the website at the moment, it's actually quite high percentage of journalists funding one another, which is quite interesting. But anyway, and, 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 and actually, that, that actually creates a culture. And then, you know, you, you bring other people in, not interested in journalism. Oh, it's, it's working. You know, it's, 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 it's going well. So, so in that American website, there was a kind of solidarity going on among the artists to help one another. But, you know, so I think to kick this kind of thing off, you, you have to retweet one another, talk to one another, and just kind of promote one another. So it's something, it's something. And, and that's certainly known from my, both my tweeting and other stuff I've written since, is other journalists and lawyers visit my site a lot, who will then obviously repurpose it, I think, and take it elsewhere. But I think there's one, because we're running a bit out of time. Do you have a question? Was it? Yes, I, I work out something in my head. I'm yeah. probably going to show my age. Um, I have a problem with how do you prove your credibility? For instance, if you're not well known, you're tweeting on something the whole world knows is going yeah. on, you know what's going on, so that's fine. But supposing I had a specialist idea or a knowledge mm. or something and I want to crowdfund that particular project, mm. people don't know me. How the hell do I convince them that I actually am reliable and, and credible to cover this or do this particular project? It's a very good point. I mean, there's a lot of trust involved because they're prepaying you. I mean, obviously, if they don't yeah, get the target. They, they don't know me. They don't, they don't know, know how well I know. They don't have anything to go on. 
How do I convince them well, that this is a project worthwhile? Okay, so there's a few things you can do. Um, firstly, obviously, you can tell the world and your potential funders who you are and what you've done. You can put your CV out there, albeit in a truncated form, and say, you know, I was a correspondent for X, uh, you know, at Y between, you know, these years. I've covered these stories. I've won these awards. That's one thing you can do. Put your CV out there, your record, if you like. And you can also display samples of work. So you can say, you know, here's uh, an example of what I want to do with this investigation or this feature. Here is 500 words of the you know, 5,000 words that I want to write for you. So there's a few things you could do. And of course, you'll be appealing to people who know you. Um, and, and obviously you will have people who know you, have met you professionally and so on, uh, as well as the sort of wider reservoir, if you like, of people who might be inclined to support you. So there are quite a few things you can do. It's certainly true if you are well known as a journalist or you are proposing to cover a particularly popular area, it's more likely that you have an easier time funding. But there are ways to pitch yourself and your work uh, if you're not famous and you're not proposing to do something that's on the Daily Mail website. I mean, there's certain tricks to this, and I realise it's just, you know, like Twitter people, I had to start martyr this, didn't I, when you first started tweeting out them, is you feel embarrassed, like your feed, you know, you mentioned it three times in a day that you want funding for this. And I remember, and I realised, especially the second time round funding, of course, nobody's following a tweet and going to your feed seeing you tweet. They're just seeing these tweets whiz by. And people may only be on for 30 minutes, not even know it's happening. So you've got to get over a certain amount of sort of embarrassment about selling yourself. You and you're giving them information. You have to introduce yourself and then really sell yourself. And, and remind people and nag them a little bit and say a little, you know, I won't make it unless this won't get done until you push me over the edge. It's a, I must admit, it's a, it's a new skill set. It's, 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 I felt very embarrassed, felt like I was begging at first. But when you get out there, people are very happy to do it. And they, you know, there's a great feeling that they've all supported you. Peter. Gentlemen over here. Anna, yeah, three. Great. Okay. So, okay, interesting. I'm curious. Right. You talk of donations, mm -hmm. not loans or investments. Yes. What accounting do you have to do? Well, I... I and also, I, what's the attitude of the regulatory authorities. Well, could do, I, I know that the reason they started up this series of rewards in Indiegogo, which led the market on Kickstarter, was you weren't allowed to invest direct. So originally it was an investment model. I think the woman I met who started Indiegogo was a theatre producer, was you know, going around to a few angels asking for you know, 50,000 pounds, thought why not go to 50,000 people and ask for one pound? But it's, there's a regulatory problem, you can't be an investor on this model yet. I think they're changing models. So basically they're paying for perks. They're paying for these little rewards, which completely. It is taxable, it's declarable. Uh, I don't know that. I mean, it's your income. Byline is merely an agency in this, uh, so you know they account for that. And what you account for it is like any other income. Uh, but it's, you know, I went to my account and I had to talk to my account. So, is this at all charitable? He said, don't try it on, Peter. <laughs> yeah. it's, just because it's crowdfunding, it's still income, it's still taxable. <laughs> yes. do, you know, do you know how many uh, readers you have? Uh, do you know anything about the readers and how are you promoted? Uh, so, is it about Peter or is it about well, my website? Byline's only started six weeks, so. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, no, I mean, so. I clarified it not through Byline, I am on it now. Yeah, so, so we, we just test launched six or seven weeks ago, so we don't have a lot of data. But what we can say is, I mean, what's promising is that, I mean, out of the people who we started, I mean, the majority of them were funded. So Julie Bindel was funded, uh, was funded, <laughs> uh, Julie Bindel was funded about 6,500 pounds. It's like Iraqi photo agency was funded $7,000 a year. So there are a lot of success stories we're making at the moment. And uh, we became the most visited crowdfunded website within seven weeks. So there's a Guardian and Contributoria. And uh, there's an American crowdfunded journal <coughs> called Beacon Reader, which started two years ago. So we're doing quite well in terms of traffic. So I mean, at, for us at the moment, it's about just getting a lot of, uh, getting good writers who already have following <coughs> to come on our website. And they bring their fans to our website. And, um, and we actually are focusing on a few niches first. So press, <coughs> press criticism, so it's pre press critique, uh, so or, you know, about or foreign reporting and so on and so forth, or feminism. And then we'll have a synergy among those topics. So people who 
funded James Dorman will fund actually Martin, or you know, people who funded Martin will be like will like will be likely to fund that Peter, or you know people who funded um, Julian Vindel will be uh, very likely to fund Beatrix Beatrix Campbell's coming on board as well. So so we are bringing on actually similar writers who will be who have, will have a similar effect, and also we are trying to create a debate within the platform. So uh, actually Rowan Pelling is uh, it has opposite uh, view on feminism against. Um, Bindle. And maybe they'll create a file within the platform and create a noise. And Jilabindle's <laughs> funders will put more money to go against, you know, the wrong feeling. Uh, we don't know yet. But anyway, we're kind of starting. <laughs> we're start, starting with uh, very heavily curated content. And once we, in six months or in seven months, once we feel confident that the culture is set and we have a good quality content <laughs> across the platform, we'll open up the platform. So any freelance writer, any blogger, um, and even a student um, can pitch their uh, project or blog and get crowdfunded. And I mean, th that's how actually what uh, Peter's example of uh, Nate Silver started as a uh, as a blogger. He's now you know one of the most famous bloggers in America. But he started as a just a blogger who just has fans. So at the moment, are you just inviting people? Yeah, we're at the moment we're just inviting people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah.